Welcome to this edition of Our Devotions, coming to you from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Melvin Christian. I am one of the visitation pastors here at the church. We are glad that you took the time to join us today. Let us prepare for God's Word by listening to an inspiring musical selection. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to present your word today. I pray that everything I say will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. And it reads as follows. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I grew up in a place called Burgess, Virginia, a small Chesapeake Bay fishing community. My father was an industrial fisherman and my mother was a housewife. I had five brothers and four sisters. In our household, there was a division of labor. 
Now, it worked for the most part. My sisters took care of the inside duties and my brothers and I handled the outside tasks like mowing the lawn, trimming the trees, and taking care of a large vegetable garden. When my older siblings got married and moved out of the house, those of us left behind assumed additional duties. My job was to mow the lawn every Saturday. My father preferred mowing on Saturdays because the lawn would look fresh on Sundays when neighbors and friends would always stop by the house after church around dinner time. Now, in those days, neighbors and friends did not wait to be invited to dinner. They just showed up. And my parents enjoyed having guests for dinner. One Saturday at age 14, when I was about to walk out of the house to mow the lawn, I saw that my father had left his Bible on the table. I opened it and saw that he had bookmarked the Gospel of John. I began reading the entire book of John and memorizing several verses in that book. When I finished, it was too late to mow the lawn. A brother came to me and said he would hate to be in my shoes when dad returned from work. When dad returned home, he asked me why I had not mowed the lawn. I simply said that I got lost in the book of John. I was ready to be scolded. Instead, my Bible reading and Bible quoting father smiled and simply said, Well, son, you decided to spend the day with the Lord. And when you are with the Lord, you are in good company. He went on to say, but. I said, oh, what's going to happen next? What's going to follow? But. And he said it again, but next week you will have to mow the lawn on Monday and on Saturday. We live in a hectic world. Sometimes we may be inclined to let our busy lives distract from spending time with Jesus and listening to his word. It can become so easy for us to get wrapped up in all the things we need to do and the things that need to be accomplished that we lose sight of what the most important thing is. We live in a time of never ending words and distractions. The distractions are obvious. The worries though are equally obvious and they seem to grow all the time. And trying to distract ourselves from our worries just seems to wear us out all the more. We can all relate to Martha who was worried and distracted by many things. Martha was rushing around, serving and doing her best to make everything good for Jesus. And where was Mary when Martha needed a hand? She chose the better part. She chose to spend time with Jesus. Jesus makes us clear that the highest priority in our lives need to be choosing the good part, as Mary did, to learn from Jesus so that we can become like him. It's love and devotion to him that makes everything else of secondary importance. It is to seek the riches of wisdom and understanding that are in him. If we don't do this, how can we follow him? How can we be his disciples? A disciple learns from the master. Spending time with Jesus requires discipline on our part. 
discipline to spend time in prayer, reading, meditating on the word of God, and listening to him speak to us, and worshiping. Martha wanted the hospitality given to Jesus to be the best. But where does Martha go wrong? Where does she go wrong? Well, she focused on doing so much that she started having a negative attitude about it. We can be so troubled by what we perceive as negative behavior in others and become so self-righteous in our good works that we start to judge others for not doing as we do, as in the case of Mary here. Serving another will not be helpful at all if we do it in a distracted way or if we are resentful about doing it. That is not what God wants. God wants us to do all things with love. Let me repeat. God wants us to do all things with love. Serving a dinner with love can be an act of worship. It can be a time of prayer. Or it can lead to distraction and anxiety and worry and resentment. There is a balance that is important, as is attitude. Are we serving the Lord free from distraction and anxieties and hidden resentments? Are we serving out of love? We must remember what is most important. Good works should flow from a Christ-centered life. They do not produce a Christ-centered life. Uh, let me again repeat this. Good works should flow from a Christ-centered life. They do not produce a Christ-centered life. When we give Jesus the attention he deserves, he empowers us to serve others. The late Tom Landry who was the coach of the Dallas Cowboys for 29 years, once said that his priorities in life were God, family, and football. He went on to say, if God is first in your life and your family is important to you and football is third, then you will have what it takes to be successful. Coach Landry realized the importance of God in his life. In God's perspective, our priority should be spending time with him. And all other activities must spring from our relationship with him. It's a love and devotion to him that makes everything else of secondary importance. So I leave you with two messages. Number one, spend some quality time with Jesus. As my father once told me when I was 14 years old, when you spend time with the Lord, you are in good company. Number two, when you are serving or working for Jesus, check your attitude. Check your attitude. Are you doing it out of love and are free of distractions, anxiety, and resentment? As we serve our neighbors in need, we are also serving Jesus. Check your attitude. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Give us the wisdom and desire to spend quality time with you and to serve you out of love without anxiety and distraction. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.